What's up everyone, it's Andrew with Uni Programmer, and in today's video, I'd like to go over the structure of a Java program just to make sure before we get into some serious code that you are knowing what's going on as we're doing it. I don't wanna just start coding too much and then you're not understanding or following. So for the structure of the Java program, I just wanna talk about what a program is made out of. So each Java program is made up of one or more classes. Now, if we look at this one, for example, this is the main class because it has the main method in it. And this is the only class in this program because this program is simple and all it does is output hello world to the screen. Now, now that we know that every Java program has one or more classes, we also need to know that a class contains one or more methods. A method is like the action of the program, what it actually does. Methods basically are the verbs. It's the action. So, for this one, the only method in this class, hello printer, is going to be the main method. And it's right here, and public static void main. This is the method. So when this class is called within the program, it immediately looks for the main method. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Now you can have more than one method, but this program has one method. Now, once we have class, and then we have a method within the class, now we need to have statements within the method. Otherwise, if there's nothing in the method, then there's no action for it to take. You can call a method, but if there's no action to take, it won't do anything. So the action within this main method right here is going to be the system out. It's right here, system.out.println, and then within its parameters, which are the parentheses, we have the string, hello world. As you can see within the quotation marks, that's the string. Now what this will do is output hello world to the screen. That is the entire purpose of this entire program. You're looking at it right here. Obviously it gets way more complicated than, than this, but if you're just starting, just trying to figure out, you need to understand the basics before you try and understand something a lot more heavier. All right, now just a little bit more structure involved. Let's go over comments. So to add comments to your code, you just do two forward slashes and you'll notice that it's green. And then you can write comments within your code. So this is public class hello printer. This is a class that outputs a string to the screen. So you can just put class that outputs a string. That is it. Now what this does, and this may seem overly simple right now, but what it does is it helps anybody who looks at this that isn't yourself, or maybe even yourself weeks down the road, and you may have forgot what this class was for. So it's a class that outputs a string to the screen. That's all this class does. Then you can go in and add notes in other places as well, or comments. And it's basically to help you remember, or anybody else remember, what this program does, or why it is written this way. Basically, it's for good communication. And that's super important when it comes to being a developer, or programmer, and working on teams. Because generally, you're not gonna be working by yourself. You're gonna be working in teams. And everybody needs to communicate to get things across to everybody else. So you can put, obviously, above the class here, um, this is the main method, so you know it's a given. However, you can put the start of the main method. And yes, this is a little elementary right now, but it's basically when you're first learning, you need to understand the basics, and then you can apply it to more advanced systems eventually. But right now, we're just learning that. So. Now that we're within our main method right now, within the class, 
we have a statement, the system.out.print line. Now, if you were to comment this out, you just want to want to basically describe it. What does it do? I mean, outputs a string. That's it. It's very simple. And then see this right here, this curly brace? If you notice when you click on it, you'll see the other one that it's connected with will highlight. That's very helpful when you're trying to look at your code to organize or make it look more appealing to the eye so it's not confusing. So this, see this little rectangle? That shows you this is the start, the open, and this is the close of the curly braces. And if you look at the class too, you click on it, and then this one's gonna highlight right here. That's telling you right there, this is the start of the class, and this is the end of the class. Now we'll go over another thing for the Java program. Now it's just errors. We'll go over errors real fast. Now, if we run this, you'll notice that it outputs exactly what it's supposed to. Hello world, easy. Simple as that. Now, Java is very specific when it comes to characters, when it comes to capitals, when it comes to syntax, everything. So one error that you may run into while you're writing code is called a syntax error. All right, for instance, if you want to output hello world to the screen and your, your S for the system is lowercase, and you try to run this, it's gonna say, number one, there's errors in this project. Are you sure you want to launch? Sure, why not? And then down here, in the console, it's gonna say there, there is an exception, there is an error. And then it also is gonna tell you which line that your error's in. So it tries to at least point you in the right direction. It can't solve the issue for you, but it'll point you in the right direction. Number eight, line eight. So if we go up to line eight, we can see that, oh, okay, obviously uh, something's wrong here. If you hover over it, system cannot be resolved. So you, what you wanna do is you know it's a syntax error. So you're gonna go ahead and capitalize it because it needs to be exact and then trying to run it again, and we have it like that. Another error that is possible is called a logical error. Now what a logical error is, it's the program runs normal, it runs fine, but it doesn't do what you wanted it to do. So, for instance, if we're trying to output hello world to the screen and I accidentally put hello world the program's still gonna run so I'll go ahead and run it oh that's not what we wanted so that's a logical error it's an error on a person's side it's an it's basically an output that wasn't intended so the program still runs fine but it's not what we wanted. And these errors can be very hard to spot on a very, like on a bigger program, a more complex application, because it, it doesn't just point you exactly where you went wrong. So the syntax errors are nice because it's gonna say, hey, go check this area. Line eight, you might have an issue right here. And it, it will even underline it. However, for logical errors, it's usually human error and it's, it, can be, it can be tough to spot. So those are the two errors that you're gonna run into and that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to hit the structure of the Java program, talk about the classes and the methods and also commenting. And this is gonna be sim simple comments. Eventually I'll, I'll show you more complex comments, but for now this is a simple way to do it and it's very easy. One last time, we have our class named hello printer. We have our main method within our class 
and you can identify the main method by seeing main. That is the name of the class, or the name of the method, sorry. And then the statement within the method is right here, and it's a system dot out. This curly brace right here, you can see when you click on it that it puts a little rectangular box around the connecting curly brace, and then also this one too. And that helps you with organization. All right, everybody, I hope that helped, and I will see you at the next Java tutorial.